Well, Japanese social gaming company Greece says overseas expansion on multiple platforms will help it expand sales even as local regulations slow the development of new titles. Mike Fern has all the latest and he joins us from Tokyo. Greed just reported annual results. Mike, how did it do and how are investors reacting? Well, in the year to uh, June 30th, Michelle, profit up 163%, but this business year it's only forecasting an 8% rise. Uh, investors not impressed. Shares down more than 5% at the start of trading. And one of the biggest shareholders is the man who founded GRI. Yoshikazu Tanaka became Japan's youngest billionaire by giving gamers what they want. Cheap, simple, fun titles for their laptops, tablets and smartphones. Forbes says the 35-year-old founder of GRI is worth $3.5 billion, two-thirds of that from a 48% stake in the company he founded. But shares have been sliding after Japanese regulators cracked down on GRI's sales methods. They say selling tokens, which give gamers the chance to win expensive add-ons, is gambling by any other name. Tanaka says the crackdown slowed development of new games in Japan, so he's expanding overseas, paying $210 million for San Francisco software designer Funzio. We're focusing on two types of game in America, Europe and Asia, simulation games and card-based battle games. The simulation game concept was designed by Funzio. We adapted it for the Apple operating system and we just released it for Android as well. Gree is also setting up a game development center in London's new tech city, another in Vancouver, and it already has offices in Amsterdam, Dubai, Sao Paulo, Singapore, Seoul and Beijing. Come on, come on, Gree's profits more than doubled from a year earlier yes. in the April-June quarter, but they only rose 8% from the previous three months on a 13% sales increase. So if it wants to keep growing, it has to figure out which games the rest of the world wants to play and make sure they play its version. And Michelle, uh, although GRI offers games in 169 countries, overseas revenue at the moment only 10% of total sales. So Mike, GRI obviously looking to expand overseas. What new games uh, can be expected to attract these overseas users? Well, it's uh, signed a partnership deal with London's Mind Candy, and uh, that's a company that developed Moshi Monsters, and it's going to offer two new titles this year. If you remember Tamagotchi, this is kind of the online version. You create and rear your own pet monster. There's already 65 million people registered to play that game. Also, Gameloft in Paris, uh, it's teaming up with them to come up with Gang Domination, which is an online card battle game that's available in more than 150 countries already. So uh, it should get GRI uh, to a, a lot more households. Now, Mike, in your report, Tanaka-san talks of two types of games, card battle games and simulation games. Now, I must confess, I am not much of a gamer. So for all of us non-gamers out there, can you explain the difference between those two? Yeah, simulation games are like real life. It's almost like having a life, you know. Uh, the Sims, Sim City, you develop a character, you people cities, and there's uh, allegedly ed educational because they teach you about things like ecosystems, genetics, uh, nothing really educational about battle card games. You have uh, a deck of cards, uh, games like Pokemon and uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, these cards have points so that uh, at decisive points of conflict in the game, you, you get the cards out and uh, you see who's uh, the winner. Uh, when I was a kid, it was all top trumps, which is still quite popular. But these games phenomenally uh, successful uh, amongst uh, small children. You see schoolyards everywhere where they're slapping these cards down and, and now they're starting to play them online on their smartphones as well. Thanks, Mike. Game playing, very serious business and I should take some of these games up. Thanks so much, Mike, for an live for us in Tokyo.